Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. The country... <laughs> this great country of ours is a buzz about the televised January 6th hearings. Today, committee members took a little day off to explain drunk Giuliani to their children. <laughs> you see, kids, when a man and a bottle love each other very much, <laughs> they exchange a special kiss. But I've got some difficult news for those of you who are planning to tune into the hearings tomorrow morning for the latest chapter, because the January 6th committee has postponed Wednesday's hearing. They promised us hearings. We can't let them get away with this. I'm storming the Capitol. Who's with me? Come on! I may have missed the spirit of this whole thing. The reason for the delay is evidently technical issues, as California Representative Zoe Lofkin explained. Putting together uh, the, the video and the exhibits is a, a, an exhausting uh, exercise yeah. for our very small, you know, video staff. So we're trying to, you know, we were going to have one, two, three in one week, and it's just, it's too much uh, for, to put it all together. Let me get this straight. So you have to postpone saving democracy because your video staff is overwhelmed? <laughs> it's like Paul Revere's famous cry, error 404, horse not found. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Come on! Come on, Lofgren. You're postponing because your poor widow video team is tie tie. I got a video team here at the Late Show, and I ride them like a borrowed mule, and I put them away wet, okay? <laughs> they put together clips five nights a week under inhuman conditions, by which I mean watching Fox News. <laughs> These folks have seen... It's awful! <laughs> These folks have seen Tucker Carlson's face more than their own children. <laughs> and they can handle anything I throw at them. Watch this. Video team! Can I get some footage of the former president refusing to say he'll accept the election results months before the vote? Go! Can you give a direct answer? You will accept the election? I have to see. Look, you... I have to see. Nailed it! Okay, how about some footage of the former president lashing out at perceived enemies? I don't like mosquitoes! Yes! <laughs> Good job! Now, footage of Mark Meadows trying to scrub away any evidence of his involvement in the coup. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Of course, I'm still digesting yesterday's bombshell that the former president demanded his followers donate to something called the Official Election Defense Fund, which raised a quarter of a billion dollars. And surprise, surprise, the committee discovered the whole thing was a grift. As the select committee has demonstrated, the Trump campaign knew these claims of voter fraud were false. Yet, they continued to barrage small-dollar donors with emails, encouraging them to donate to something called the Official Election Defense Fund. The select committee discovered no such fund existed. So he duped $250 million from his most passionate supporters, then watched as they all go to prison while he sat in Mar-a-Lago double-fisting coconut shrimp. And these aren't wealthy people. You can always tell because they're wearing nothing but giveaway merch from the losing team. <laughs> so, if there was no election defense fund... <laughs> Come on! <laughs> so, if there was no election defense fund, where did the money go? Well, according to the committee, there was a $1 million donation to the personal foundation of the former president's chief of staff, Mark Meadows. Yes, the Meadows Foundation is a charity that raises money to fund research into how much money it can raise. <laughs> they also skimmed off over $200,000 for the former president's hotels, and that was just Giuliani's bar tab. <laughs> of course, they spread cash around to their friends and fam. For instance, Don Jr.'s fiance, Kimberly Guilfoyle, was paid $60,000 for her two-minute January 6th speech but it was worth every dime. I'll never forget her immortal words. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Big fans. Big Guilfoyle fans. 
Of course, the big question looming over all these hearings is somebody's going to jail for this, right? Right? Right, guys? Somebody's going to jail? Well, we got a hint last night from committee chairman and man seeing the other table get their guac even though he ordered first. <laughs> Benny Thompson. Representative Thompson told reporters that the panel will not make any criminal referral of the former president or anyone else to the Justice Department. Counterpoint, why not? <laughs> There's a reason law and order doesn't start like this. In the criminal justice system, there is one branch who investigates the crimes. And that's it. Everyone goes free. Now, only... <laughs> sure. That's a pretty good call. That's a pretty good call. Only time will tell if the DOJ prosecutes anybody, but the committee has already accused Rudy Giuliani of first-degree bruise slurping with intent to chug a lug. <laughs> committee member Jamie Raskin was asked why the committee highlighted Rudy's intoxication. The allegations uh, in the hearing today that Rudy Giuliani was drunk on election night. I wanted to understand from you why you felt it was important to include. Um, I, I don't know that it was important to include because I really can't tell the difference between, uh, you know, those two conditions for him. Well, yes. <laughs> it can be very hard to tell because sometimes he's drunk and sometimes he's pretending he's not. <laughs> But the forensic team here at the Late Show Labs has created a computer rendering of what Rudy Giuliani would look like in the event he briefly became sober. <laughs> Looking good. Looking good, Mr. Mayor. Now, one person unhappy about the accusations against Rudy was Rudy, who today tweeted, I refused all alcohol that evening. My favorite drink, <laughs> Diet Pepsi. I love Diet Pepsi, especially a robust... Red Diet Pepsi, or in the summer, a Diet Pepsi Rosé. I also enjoy Box Diet Pepsi. It doesn't have the same notes as the bottled one, but after a few soup for a few <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Until they face consequences, the ex-president's family is still out there peddling their wares, including eldest MAGA son Don Jr., Seen here wondering, how come the airplane doesn't have to flap? <laughs> Don Jr.'s latest business venture is an homage to his dad. He's been promoting Good Ranchers, a MAGA-friendly mail-order meat company. He put his endorsement on Instagram. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what is Instagram? Did you put that up on the Instagram? <laughs> you get that up on the Twitter, on the Instagram? <laughs> they put us an ultimate up on the Instagram. <laughs> some delicious <laughs> and dewy sausage in your Instagram. <laughs> Mix it up, I'll have you a high hallelujah. <laughs> he put his endorsement on Instagram, the TV of your phone. Guys, if you haven't heard about Good Ranchers before, you need to. They're one of the only companies out there delivering 100% American meat to your door 100% of the time. 100% of the time, there will be meat at your door. <laughs> Every time you open it, boom! More meat. <laughs> like it or not, there's meat there. You're gonna have to walk over the meat every time you open your door. That sounds less like a delivery and more like a threat. <laughs> hey, snitches get rib tips. <laughs> All I'm saying, I hate to see your wife and kids end up with infinite meat. <laughs> Don also uh, convinced his fiance to push his meat. Here's Liberty. <laughs> Thank you. Here's Liberty lover Kimberly Guilfoyle in her own steak shilling video. And when the kids want great steaks, they only want to eat Good Ranchers. And I don't blame them. For having steaks and some potatoes tonight, you can go to GoodRanchers.com. Holy carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> Who grills like that inside the house? These steaks are perfect for any occasion. It is for Father's Day or 
graduation or Father's Day, and I just, I just want to take a nap, Dad. The best is yet to come. Nighty night. Waga, waga, waga. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, hey, Steve, given this family's whole deal, what's the grift here? Is it gopher meat? Maybe. Because after numerous customer complaints, Good Ranchers' accreditation with the Better Business Bureau was revoked. <laughs> with one purchaser saying steaks were discolored and had sludge on them. <laughs> well, like father, like steak. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein. We'll talk Watergate, a bygone era when presidents were capable of shame. Stick around.